Darwin was very special because he hit on something through careful and patient research. He hit on something that was important and, and revolutionized the way people thought about uh, human beings and where they come from. Certainly Darwin was a genius. He, at a stroke, solved a problem which should have been solved thousands of years before but wasn't. His answer, natural selection, is breathtakingly simple. The ratio of that which is explained to that which does the explaining is colossal. It's a, it's a very, very simple theory. Darwin was not a lone genius. He was the leader of the field, but he was not on his own. He was supported by others and exchanged with others his ideas. For him to be able to produce not only the theory of evolution, but all the other scientific work he was able to do, I think is remarkable. And I think Darwin uh, would be a good choice for man of the millennium. Even today, we're still feeling the shock waves, as it were, of what Darwin uh, offered us. Less than 150 years after Darwin identified the process of evolution, mankind wants to remove its traditional role. Cloning and genetically modified food raise serious questions and fears. Well, in one sense, there's nothing new about genetic engineering. In one sense, genetic engineering goes back centuries, even millennia, to when people first started selectively breeding. You can breed farm animals and plants. Darwin used that as his model for natural selection, where nature does the selecting instead of the human breeder. But that's old. What we've got now is a new kind of genetic modification, where scientists go straight in and modify genes or import genes from other sources directly. Well, clearly that could have great benefits, but equally clearly, if you wanted to make a, a really lethal biological weapon, then genetic modification would be the way to do it. This is Darwin's house in Kent. It was here that the great scientist and writer Charles Darwin came to spend over 40 years of his life researching and analyzing his scientific findings. It was his haven, his family home, his laboratory, and his library. His work, obsession, and genius grew and grew during his years at Down House. When he came to Down, he had the theory of evolution in his head, but he needed to work out the details and also to work out the proof. Um, and it was here that he managed to do that with patient experiments in the kitchen garden and in the hothouses, with very careful observations in the meadows and along the country paths around, and obviously reading in his study. Darwin lived and worked here for 40 years and probably hardly left the place for more than a week, a year in all that time. If you think of a, a scientific career, you might expect the person to be working in a museum or in a, in a university, but Darwin was working here at Down House and everything he worked on had to come into his, that one room, the old study, which was where he you know, lived, worked and wrote. Darwin had seen Down's proximity to London as a major advantage. He initially intended to spend a few days each month in London, maintaining his contacts with the scientific community, but his health restricted these wishes. During the 17 years when he was working on the origin of species, Darwin was constantly researching and publishing material on an ever-widening area of natural history. A prodigious letter writer, Darwin corresponded regularly with scientists like Lyle and Hooker who visited him at Down. He established links with commercial breeders, naturalists and botanists, 
as well as any other source capable of illuminating the process of heredity. Down House became a center of debate and a focus point for the scientific world. He was receiving up to 14,000 letters a year from admirers of his work. Today, it is still a place of scientific pilgrimage. Darwin had not always lived in Kent. He was born on February the 12th, 1809, in Shrewsbury, the fifth of six children. As a member of an affluent upper-middle-class family, he was to enjoy a life of privilege. Darwin's childhood, until the death of his mother, was spent at the heart of a happy and affectionate family. In common with many men destined for great things, Darwin's youth gave few clues to his gifted nature. On the contrary, at times, his father, Robert, a successful physician, despaired of Charles making any contribution to society. Well, surprisingly enough, Darwin wasn't a very good pupil at school. In fact, in his last year at Shrewsbury, his father wrote him a letter saying that he was good for nothing but dogs shooting and rat catching, and he was going to be an embarrassment to his family. Um, but he probably wasn't very good because he, he was getting a classical education and what he was really interested in was science. Um, and so at home with his brother he was setting up chemical experiments in a lab and also the shooting in fact was quite good and served him in good stead for later life because on the Beagle voyage he could go out and kill as many specimens as he needed to. He showed clearly from an early age that he was going to be a naturalist. He was a very keen, he collected beetles and um, shells and plants. After a false start at Edinburgh University, where he abandoned a course in medicine, Darwin was dispatched to Cambridge University, a powerhouse of the Anglican establishment, in 1827 to study to be a clergyman. He'd never been keen on medicine. He had followed his father on his rounds in Shrewsbury. Um, he was prepared to give it a try, but when he went to Edinburgh and studied and attended um, the anatomy lectures, he found that he couldn't stand watching other people in pain, the sight of blood, and it was really his squeamishness that led him to decide that he couldn't make it his career. Well, after his father realised that he wasn't going to be able to be a doctor, um, he decided it might be a good idea for Charles to follow an alternative professional career. And so an obvious easy solution was to become a clergyman. And Darwin spent several years at Cambridge studying to be a clergyman. Uh, but in fact, most of the time he spent attending scientific lectures and producing natural history studies. And so by the end of his university, his degree period, I think it was pretty obvious that Charles didn't want to be a member of the clergy, but actually was more interested in science. He formed a strong friendship with John Henslow, and with his encouragement graduated successfully. It was Henslow who suggested Darwin for the position of ship's naturalist on board HMS Beagle's surveying voyage to South America. Darwin's father, Robert, who was required to finance his son's trip, was reluctant to agree.